You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. So excited for you to join me today on this Motivation and Mindset Monday, one of my favorite days of the week. I love Mondays in general. I always get excited that, you know, it's a new week, it's a fresh start. I've had an amazing time the last 48 hours, always with my family. It's all family time, all the time. And then I get to get started back into my other passion, and my other passion is my work. It it is teaching in general. And today, what I wanted to do is really share with you how to create the ultimate bucket list. But we're going to do it in a very different way today and in a very different mindset. Because you, so here's how this came up. It always comes up essentially from my practice, from my life. And that's why I love being able to share these things with you on the podcast is because they're all from the real world. So in my practice right now, working with a couple people, a couple people who are a little bit more sick than the average person, meaning that... so. I usually work with people who want to transform their body. They have mood-based issues, a lower mood. They might have anxiety. They might have depression. I work with a lot of people with autoimmune issues. I work with people with mystery-based illnesses, with joint pain, a lot of digestive-based issues, at least probably two-thirds of my practice. And we help them with all of those things. But sometimes people come in and they might have life-threatening illnesses. Okay, we'll just put it that way because I don't want to start to go over specific topics. And the thing is, a lot of their specialists don't give them a lot of hope. And that's what I don't like about conventional medicine. It can be very cold and it can be very sterile. And that's not we, how we as humans operate. We're a greater community. We're all individuals within a greater community. And it's my opinion right now that one of the most important things that you can do if you are very sick or even where I was, which I'll talk about in a moment, is to stay positive. And I want to tell you why. Because the body always listens to the mind. And I can give you examples. Think about the days when you're the most down, the most depressed because of how something happened in your life. You feel low energy. You feel sluggish. You want to overdose on carbohydrates. You might not be able to digest foods as well when you're stressed. The mind also dictates the body. It's called the psychology affecting the physiology. And this is well studied. And same vice versa. You know, your physiology can affect your psychology. And that's why both the mind and body must be working in unison. But I'll tell you, as we start to stay positive, and one of the most important things I do with people with life-threatening based illnesses is that they focus on the future in a positive way. I call it creating future expectation or positive expectation of the future. So what I have them do besides their diet, their nutritional supplements, their exercise, their de-stressing, their sleep, all of these things that you're going to learn about in my new book, all of those things, but, and it's in my book as well, but I also make sure that they journal every single day in the morning when they wake up and then before bed. Those are the two most important times of the day. I'll be talking about this more in the future, but I have talked about it before in the past, is that I, what I want them to do, throw their illness out the window for a moment. Think about what are you doing this year? What are you doing in the next couple of years? Then what are you doing later in life? And I want to go through all of those things today. So you're creating positive expectation that you will be able to accomplish all of those things. And the beautiful thing I think about doing a bucket list in the way that I'm going to teach you today is that you don't want to necessarily create everything to check off that list in the next year. That's not a true bucket list. That's like, okay, like here's a bunch of things that I would really like to do and they're easy to do. So I'm going to accomplish them all this year. No, I want things that it takes you some real work to accomplish in five years, 10 years, 15 years from now. And then also all the things that you look forward to, maybe in whatever you consider a retirement in your 70s and 80s and plus. So that's, I want to share some of my examples today as well. But I'll tell you, all this came about because you know my story of I got really sick as a teenager. And so I was told by doctors the negative expectations you're going to have to manage these diseases, the Addison's disease, the myelagic encephalomyelitis, the POTS, 
the type 2 diabetes, you know, dysregulation of blood sugar. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's really low. And then the um, joint-based issues with autoimmune issues. So I was told, okay, take these medications. It may get worse. We'll increase the dosage. Make sure not to overexert yourself. Don't play sports. All of these different things, which led me to believe, okay, so when I have kids one day, I can't even play basketball with them. I can't like, you know, go for a jog. I can't do any of these things. And it put me in a really bad mind space. So again, you've, you've heard me say before, all of a sudden, one day I had to change that. I just had to change it. I said, you know what? I'm going to live my life no matter what. Yes, I have to be careful how I live my life, but it's going to now be from more of a positive expectation. And I'm going to try to do everything in my power. I'm just going to study everything that I can study. Has anyone else ever gotten better from this? And if they have, what did they do? Let me try to model that. Let me just see what that blueprint is. And just try to follow it. Because I don't know any better. I'm, you know, I'm just kind of lost. I'm going from person to person, doctor to doctor, specialist to specialist, trial and error, and to see what works. But it's always, I've always said it's been a blessing now that I'm completely healed, that I have more energy than I've ever had before in my life. But what happened was when I was that teenager, everything changed, meaning like my mindset changed. All of a sudden, I, as a 17-year-old kid, understood the shortness of life. So I understood that. I looked at life very, very different, no longer as like a 17-year-old kid who had a huge ego, everything going for him, all that. No, that was all gone, all gone. So now it was, whoa, I live in a very different place. I was out of school for, I believe, two months. I knew who my friends were now and who weren't. And I wasn't able to play sports in the same way. So did I have the same camaraderie? And I wasn't able to study like I used to be able to study for school and all these different things. So things changed. But at the same time, it gave me the perspective of someone maybe in their 60s and 70s. I got that perspective of understanding the shortness of life and being able to see like, oh, I have to really now plan. Like I have to, I can't take this for granted because I haven't been given a great prognosis by my doctors. And these are the best doctors in the world, right? So if they're not giving me a, a good prognosis, well, then something must really be wrong. But the interesting thing is this. As I started to heal, as I started to meet other practitioners, functional medicine practitioners, naturopathic doctors, acupuncturists, healers from all over the world, as I started to meet them, and as I started to heal, I got a new mindset. I kept with me the understanding of the shortness of life, but now I had the mindset of, I can accomplish anything. If I was somehow able to get off my blood pressure regulating drugs, in this case, not to lower blood pressure, but actually to increase it because of the pot space syndrome that I had. And if I was able to overcome Addison's disease and now actually produce my own cortisol naturally and boost my DHEA and my hormones, if I was able to do that naturally without drugs, what else could I accomplish? If I was able to get rid of the myelagic encephalomyelitis, which people say you just need to live with for the rest of your life, if I was able to overcome that and no longer have the flu-like symptoms, and go on to do natural bodybuilding and weightlifting and all of these things. If I was able to do that, what else could I accomplish in life? That was now my new mindset. So that's why I tell people all the time, I'm going to help you get a few quick wins. Okay, I'm going to help you with that. But then you're going to realize that it was you all along. All I did was give you a blueprint. I taught you maybe the steps needed to get there, but you did the work. And now that you know you're willing to do the work and that you can follow a blueprint, you can accomplish anything you want in your life. And I truly believe that. And so one of the things that I want to do is start to look at my life as a set of stages and to be able to say, here's the things that I want to accomplish now in my life. And, and we'll call it my like family years, right? When my girls are still at home, that's just kind of what I'm referring to or younger in my career as well. And then I want to think of it more as we'll say midlife. And that for me will probably, I would say, go until my early 70s. And then I want to think of another stage after that. Okay. So that's how I'm looking at it. Yours might be a little bit different. And there's a few things that I want to accomplish on this list. And every year, every year, definitely around the new year, a lot of people call it like a vision board. But what I do is I create it more from a journaling perspective. I like to write things down. And and then I like to look at past years. And I, I, I don't just look at it once a year. But what I do is I, I reassess. You know, there are things in the list that sometimes get pulled off the list because they no longer have value or importance to me. And remember, this is your list. It's a private list. I'm going to share with you a few of those things I have on my list. And today, you probably don't know this, but today is actually my birthday. 
And so for me, this is another one of those times where I say, okay, I'm one year older. How do things look in my life? Let's just take a look back at the past year. What did I accomplish? What did I fall short on? And if I fell short on anything, I don't get upset about it. I ask myself, did I fall short on it? Because it wasn't that valuable to me, meaning like it wasn't that big a priority? Or did something else kind of reprioritize it? Meaning did something else become more important? And so I start to look at all of those things. And today is just one of those days for reflection. And I look back now today, uh, happier than I have ever been because I see what's transpiring. I get to see a lot of what's happened in my career and in my family, and I like how it's going. But there have been times where I haven't liked how it's going. And that's for sure. With my health, with relationships, with family, with spirituality, with career, with all of those things. And so what I do is I just step back and I try to do from a third party outside of myself and assess that and say, okay, what can I improve on? Don't get upset about it. It's already happened. What can I improve upon? That's how I look at it. And then I use this positive expectation. Here's what I want to happen in the next year, the next five or 10 years, whatever it might be and then later in life. So what I want to do is just share with you a few of mine. And then I want you to start to just use those. Don't Obviously, you're not going to copy mine, right? Because it's my life. But what you're going to do then is journal today. I would love you to journal today. Maybe you think about it during your lunchtime. But what I want you to do, or throughout the day, but what I want you to do is maybe just take a half hour before bed. I would love for you to do that and just say, here's everything I want to accomplish in my life. Now, I've done this many times. Everything I want to accomplish... And then what I kind of do is, again, I don't have to have a strict deadline. Very, very important. No strict deadlines for this, okay? Because this is the big vision, the big vision for your life. And write down as many things as you could possibly accomplish. And then maybe just put like um, a five, meaning like all these things need to happen within the next five years or you'd like them to, right? And then these are in the next 15 years. And then these are maybe later in life. However you want to do it, I just put them in blocks. So first I write down everything I want to accomplish. Everything. I don't hold back. I don't say, oh, you, Steve, you could never accomplish that. You're never going to accomplish that. No, no, no. I don't allow that. I can put in the most ridiculous things on this list because it's my list. It's my list. I can change it whenever I want. So what I've done now, and again, this really does change as I get a little older, and part of it is the understanding for me that I just don't need as much to be happy. And so that's why when I look back on you know, a, a vision board or again, like this bucket list, as I call it, from five years ago, I'm like, oh, you know, that's not as important to me. Like maybe they were, they were more, uh, what's the best word, material-based. And I just don't have those wants anymore. For whatever reason, they hold less value. And it seems to be that way for a lot of people. Not for everyone, but a lot of people as they just get a little older, like, oh, you know, that just doesn't hold as much value. What really holds for value is, is things that essentially um, are more community-based. So without me dancing around it, let me get into a few of these right now. So actually, one more sidestep before I give you my list is that a lot of people might be where I was 10 plus years ago. And so I think it's very important because I, I understand where you're coming from, that all of these positive expectations are very difficult when you're not in a good space. When I understand that. like Health-wise, really, really important. If you're not in a good space, it's hard to accomplish any of this. Meaning like, if I had difficulty just walking up one flight of stairs or trying to sleep through a night you know, because I couldn't fall asleep as a complete insomniac or had brain fog all the time, believe me, I understand where you're coming from and I'm sensitive to that situation. So what I want you to do first is your goal, your real, your big goal. You so still set goals, but your big goal should be, I want to get my body well over the next year. And I believe everyone, no matter what you're dealing with, can get well over a full 12 months. I believe most people can get well in 12 to 16 weeks. I really believe that. And then you reinforce that over the next year. So why do I say that? Well, someone comes into my practice, let's say with... um. Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, sarcoidosis, MS, like just think of like an autoimmune based condition. Okay. So they come in, we get them feeling better within 12 to 16 weeks, but they're not better. Okay. Their cells have only undergone one transformation, meaning like in 120 days, all their red blood cells have turned over. So type 2 diabetes, we work a lot with a lot of people with type 2 diabetes. And again, we, so just, I want to be clear on this. I'm not curing diseases. I'm looking at a foundational level of what's wrong with this person in terms of toxicities or deficiencies. I lab test for those, whether it's the big five that I talk about, the omega, the thyroid adrenal hormone test, the food sensitivity test, the organic acids test, the hair tissue mineral analysis, 
I look for the deficiencies, minerals, vitamins, neurotransmitters, all those things, and I, I add them back in, right? And then I look at the toxicities, the heavy metals. I look at the overgrowth, whether it's from yeast or bacterial overgrowth, or maybe it's H. pylori or Klebsiella or parasite, whatever it might be. I look at those things, and then I help to remove them, okay? That's what I do in my practice. I allow people then to understand that they have full control over their body, and then they get that one cell turnover. They get new cell membranes. They get better balance of hormones and blood sugar. After that, then they have to keep reinforcing it because then they get a second turnover of red blood cells and another three to four months, and then another one, and then another one. By the end of 12 months, their body has been totally renewed by 97%. They are literally a new human. That's why no matter what you're dealing with right now health-wise, 12 months from now, it's not that long. Again, it's not that long. You'll be a completely different human. Your cells won't even be the same. They will all be new. So it's one great way to look at it. Get rid of the symptoms in 12 to 16 weeks. Feel better continue to reinforce that, do the things that got you healthy, then you now have all this energy. You have all this vibrancy. You can start to then look into things like genetic testing and all those other things that look like, okay, now that I got myself well, let's look at anti-aging. Let's get this body as optimized as it can be. That's where I'm at right now in my life is like, okay, I feel great. How much greater can I feel? Like That's always the game that I play and I test like one new supplement at a time. And I'm like, okay. And again, these are obviously functional medicine supplements. I'm not messing around with like some random new thing that just came on the market. Never would I recommend that. For me, never do I recommend it for you. I'm looking at things that we already know work with a lot of clinical research behind it or their Ayurvedic-based formulas. And I'm going to share more of that with you in the future, of course. So here's the thing though, get your body healthy first. And I had to say that. And the reason is this, I understand what it's like to be depressed anxious, angry, moody, irritable. And the last thing that you want to do is think of this happy list of all these things that you're going to accomplish in life when you can't even see yourself getting healthy or getting better or whatever it might be in the first place. But I'll tell you why this is so important. It was part of my healing process. I was not able to get fully better until I decreased the anger. I boosted my mood. I lowered my anxiety. And the reason is, and I'll talk about this. um, Actually, you know what? I might talk about this more this week as well is something called the neuroendoimmunological system. And that sounds complicated, but really all it is is how your mind perceives the world, okay? It affects the nervous system. If you're anxious, that's going to throw off everything from digestion to hormones, everything, blood sugar, okay? That's the endocrine system, right? The cortisol, the blood sugar, the thyroid, all right? And if that gets thrown off, your immune system gets thrown off. What happens when your immune system gets thrown off? Autoimmune disease, weakened immune system, overactive immune system, and that's what we call the disease-based state, the autoimmune issues, the, you know, you name it, because it can be anything. Any type of inflammation destruction is actually an immune-based is a pathology, meaning like the immune system, it's not messing up. There's a reason why it's doing that. It's following orders and its orders are followed too well, right? It's doing too good a job and that's causing a little bit of chaos inside the body. So that's why I had to calm myself down, calm my wild mind, because it is wild, All right, but I've tamed it the best that I can. I allow it to come out every once in a while. But so what I've done is now I've worked on both mind and body. And that's why I believe this list is so powerful. So now without further ado, let me share with you a few of the things as I look at on my birthday of what I still want to accomplish in my life. And maybe we'll do this a year from now. And I'll tell you how my bucket list has potentially changed. And I probably have about 50 things, I would say. I think I have about 50 things or so right around there. I haven't counted exactly, but I'd say it's about 50 on my bucket list right now. And I will continue to add to that. Remember, your bucket list should never be empty. (laughs) Keep filling up that bucket. All right. So on my bucket list in the short term, or or actually, so one more thing, one more thing I want to give you is what have I had previously on my bucket list that has already come true? So many things, so many things. So I, I told you on a couple, the Mindset and Motivation Monday about complaining, I told you that one of my goals was to move to Boston. Well, I moved to Boston in 2004 after working in the city for about four years of doing a really brutal commute from Providence, Rhode Island. And and I talked about that. So check out that that show if you haven't already. Now, I'm grateful. I mean, I love Providence, Rhode Island, by the way. I love that city. But I'm grateful also for that commute now because I now can appreciate the juxtaposition of walking three minutes to work, right, from my home. Like I can appreciate that now having what I have now living in the city. Becoming a personal trainer. That was a goal of mine when I was young. I was like 17 years old. Uh, got sick, saw people with really, they're in great shape, good bodies. 
and I was withering away. I, I lost, I probably lost about 30 pounds when I got really sick. I went down from maybe 160 pounds to like 130 pounds, like 129 pounds when I got really sick. And so I was like, wow, those people in the gym, they're personal trainers, they're in great shape. I want to be one of them one day. And, and I got certified literally right before my 18th birthday and was a personal trainer all through college and still am to this day. I mean, I, I, lo- I love that that's part of my upbringing basically is being a personal trainer from way back in the day. And now for, I only do it for a half a day once a week on Tuesday mornings from 7 a.m. to 12. But it's, it's, I have to be honest, one of my favorite times of the week. It really is. So one of the things too is on my bucket list, like that's what I created. I created that, that I always wanted to be able to work with clients on body transformation. Even if it is only for a half a day, I still own two locations in Boston. One of them is personal training nutrition and the other is a functional medicine naturopathic practice. So I have two. I have, I have both of my loves for my career, right? And then becoming a, a naturopathic doctor, right? And that wasn't even on the bucket list because I didn't think that was a possibility. I never thought that was a possibility. I really didn't. I had... You know, growing up, I've said before in Medford, Massachusetts, for me to think that I would become a naturopathic doctor was not even, it wasn't even a possibility. I didn't even know what a naturopathic doctor was until I was maybe like 24 years old. Uh, I truly, truly didn't know that. But I knew that, and this was another one, sitting there as a sick kid in a functional medicine practice with a lot of hope for the very first time. So I couldn't get well with conventional medicine. But I sat there for like a third follow-up visit. I was feeling a little bit better. I was learning things about my adrenals, my HPA access, my food sensitivities, and all these different things. And I was sitting there saying, wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing if I could open a practice like this one day? But again, didn't put that on the bucket list because never my, I mean, how would I get the money to open up a practice? How would I do this, this, and this? And so when I opened up my wellness center in 2012, 2012, it was a, a really amazing day. And I built that out from scratch, from the, you know, just gutted the whole place built it out exactly how I wanted it. So a few of those things that have come well as well is writing a book. I always wanted to write a book and now I'm on my third book. So I'm really excited about that. And the last thing, this was about three years ago, wanting to publish a podcast. Okay. Had no idea how to publish a podcast, but I said, I'm into podcasts for the first time. I really love it. This is something I would like to do. So all of those things I have accomplished, I love that I was able to achieve them and you know what? They all gave me wins to believe that these future things will happen as well. So what do I want to accomplish in the next few years? All right. Let's say the next five years, because I think that that's enough time. One of them I think you'll think is funny is that I want to run the Boston Marathon. And you know that I'm not a proponent of long distance running. You know that I think that it's brutal on the joints. Well, here's why. is because I was told that I was never going to be able to play sports ever again. I was never going to be able to push my body. Well, running a marathon is the ultimate elbow in the ribs to all of those specialists, right? All of the best of the best specialists who said I would never be able to. So it's a little bit of a fun jab. That's all it is. But also, it's a sense of accomplishment that, you know, I ran the Boston Marathon. There's so much history to it and that I would love to just look back. Well, here's one other reason why, and I don't usually talk about this. I tried to get back into running. I was around 18 years old, 19 years old, and I tore my Achilles tendon. And so I had planned to run the Boston Marathon actually my freshman year, and uh, it just never happened. Uh, one, my body couldn't hold up. It was exhausted, and I tore my Achilles. So this is just kind of getting back into it. But at the same time, I want to create a training program for those people who are looking to accomplish running a marathon as well without having to run the long distance. I believe it will be one of the first times a training program has been created where you don't have to train the brutal miles to be able to accomplish a marathon in a really good time. So I look forward to publishing that one day as well. I have to do the research. I mean, not the research, but I have to do the in-person work myself and improve that it works before I can share it with you. Another thing I want to do is create a TV show, a live online TV show. I want to have a, a full studio. I want to have guests in there. I want to bring you the best of the best. So I want to combine a podcast. So we'll always do the podcast, but I want to add video to that as well. I love the interaction. I love to learn from smart people. And so what I want to do is bring experts on and and have them share with us. Maybe it's a cooking demonstration. Maybe it's a new technology in the space. Maybe it's a new lab test. I would love to be able to bring that to you. So that's something I'm excited about. I would love to reach a a million people per month with this podcast. And I actually think we're going to do that by the end of the year. A million downloads, uh, a million people reached per month. That to me is just exciting. That's like, what do I want to do? I want to build the best health community possible, people that really care. I don't know what the best is, but I just want it to be people that truly care about other people. I see it happening every day on the cabralsupportgroup.com. That's our free Facebook group. 
Love that. I try to jump in whenever I can, answer some questions, give some feedback. I have an amazing team. That team is just so great. And so I'm super thankful to all of them. And I want to one day, next five years, write a New York Times bestselling book. Why? Because that will further spread my message, I believe. I really do. I believe it'll spread that message of being able to take control of the mind and body, take control of this life. That includes your health. That includes everything that goes along with it. And so that will just take a little bit more effort. I mean, the thing is like, well, you might say, why not do it with this book? Well, the truth is that getting on the New York Times bestseller list is a huge feat, meaning like you need to have a full marketing team. You need to do all these different things. And it's just not the focus right now. The focus for me is trying to teach and provide really good information. But I know that I can further that if I'm able to reach more people. And of course, by becoming a New York Times bestselling author. So I want you to hold me accountable to this. And I want this is something that I want to accomplish. I want it because I also feel that the message is heard. I want this message to be heard. I really do. And so however means necessary, then that is great. So those are some things I'm looking forward to. And then just from a personal standpoint, again, I don't have a lot of monetary based things, but I would love to get, I think, I think in the next couple of years, my family, we want to move outside of the city. And I would like to have just a little bit more peace and quiet, maybe a little bit more land. I will still work in the city because I love the city, but I think I would just like to have a little bit more of a, a community quieter. I do love that. I'm actually, I'm, I'm amped up when I'm at work, but I like quiet when I'm outside of work, which is why I love going to Maine and I love just shutting down. I love putting on a pair of flip-flops or sandals. And, a, you know, I just love just relaxed that that's, you know, quiet environment. So possibly, right? But I don't know. Like that's a question mark. We love the city so much. Do we want to leave? So it's going to take us some time to discover that. And then what do I not want to accomplish yet? So that's what I talk about now. Well, let's take one step back. Right now, my next 15 years are dedicated to my two little girls. They really are. I don't want anything, and this includes my work as well, to come between me and me being the best father possible. Because I know that their development partially hinges on how I act as a father. And I think that that's really, really important for them. I think it's important for me. I had good parents. I had great parents. And so it's important for me to be able to do my best. You know, I don't think that my parents were necessarily perfect. And I don't think that I'm perfect either. But what I'm trying to do is be the best version of me for them. And so that I set that so that hopefully we have a great relationship for life. That's what I'm looking for. Why 15 years? My oldest is five. My youngest is three. It, when 15 more years from now, they're in college. And so I just want to say, I want to have no regrets with them and say that I spent the most time possible with them. Realistic, right? Because I, I have to work. I do love my work. And if I'm all with them all the time and I'm not doing any work, then I'm not a good father either because it's this pull between my passion of work and my family. My 15 years is truly dedicated to them. After that, it's, it's going to be even more work. And it's, but it's not work to me, remember. So I love what I do. So I want to do more of it. So what's that 15 years from now necessarily look like? Well, from there, I think this will happen earlier, but I plan to do a documentary. And I plan to do a documentary where I go back to the, the clinics, the hospitals, and a lot of the, the people that I studied with overseas. And I show people how people are healing through different Eastern-based modalities. And especially when you combine that, when you combine it with this functional medicine or this orthomolecular medicine, okay? So I want to do a documentary. Now, I don't know if that happens now or later. I'm not going to put a timetable on it, but maybe I make a great connection and it happens within the next couple of years. That would be amazing too, okay? But I need to make sure that it's balanced. And then the other thing is, I know for sure, I know for sure that when my daughters are grown and they're in college and their cousins will have been grown then as well and, and family will have kind of done their thing, that my wife and I are definitely not going to spend winters in Boston. So we'll be most likely traveling or we'll be in South Miami or we'll be in Southern California for January, February, and March. For sure, we will not be in Boston during the winter. And I love Boston. I really do. But those months are challenging months. It's cold. It's raw. It's wet. It's all of those things. But at the same time, the winter makes you so appreciate the good weather. It's funny because in Boston, once we get spring days, it will only hit 50. People will be in shorts and a t-shirt or tank top running. Like it's this manic feeling. And I love that too. So it's funny. You know, we always miss what we don't have and what we have when it's hard makes us appreciate the good things when we get them. So those are just a few of the things on my bucket list. Hopefully they just kind of gave you an example, but I want you to create your own. You know, what is it that you're going to be doing in your life that you look forward to? Don't let anyone see this. This is for you. It's personal. 
Don't feel like you're even judging yourself. Write down this big list of everything, anything that comes to mind. Think about maybe even uh, the car that you want. Remember, like back in the day, I used to think about the car that I wanted. Now, it doesn't matter to me, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't matter to you because it could mean like when you got this car, it means that you accomplished this. And that's great too. So I'm not here to judge and you shouldn't judge yourself for your wants. This is your life. You're the one that gets to create it. Remember, you're the one that gets to create it. And as you write down this big list, you start to think about, okay, now who do I need to be? What do I need to do? And, and so that I can get these things on my list. That's the great thing. Like one of the things, I just want to share one more thing with you. One of the things a few years back is that I wanted to take my family away, get everyone away to another country. And we went to Italy and I wanted to be able to all just enjoy the trip together, you know, good family, good food, all of these things. And it was an amazing experience. And I was able to do that. I, I rented a house. We rented a house for a little over a week and we had all family get together. It was this be- beautiful villa in Italy. And it was absolutely amazing. And we still talk about it to this day. So I'll just let you know, like a lot of the things that you want to accomplish, they should be about experiences. They should be about community. And it's kind of like that blue zones things. This is where we all get together. This is how we enjoy life. We come together. And so Anyway, have all sorts of things on your list, but don't discount all the things that you want to create in terms of experiences in your life. You know, fully get everything that you can out of this life, fully experience it, have positive expectation no matter where you're at right now. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Cabral Concept. I truly do appreciate each and every one of your listens. And if this show was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone else you believe it could serve. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.